All right, so let's look at the, uh, the JFK speech on a recent board. We know all of our argument formats. And as I said, um, the benefit the benefit of this is real world application. Like this, you know, really, really great speech writers use these devices to create really, really good stories, really, really good narratives, right? This is what our, uh, this is what our society, all societies are built on sort of the mastery of rhetoric from the beginning of the time, right? Rhetoric is one of the most powerful devices, if not the most powerful device. And I don't mean rhetoric in sort of the structure sense, including poetry and, and music and such, but rhetoric is a, a very emotive means of galvanizing, mobilizing the population, right? It's, it's, if you're really, really good at it, um, it's a very, 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 very powerful tool. And a good speechwriter is, is, I mean, a good speechwriter, they work magic. So what I did was I went to um, AmericanRhetoric.com. It's a fabulous site. My wife is an English teacher, so we're both nerds, obviously, and we, we sit around and we talk about just good rhetoric. From a rhetorical standpoint, I'm not going to talk about all of the different rhetorical strategies that are implemented in here. Some amazing rhetorical strategies are implemented in here. So if you are uh, an English teacher and you want to analyze this speech just for its rhetorical strategies and not sort of its conceptual um, argumentative mapping devices, then by all means do that. But I'm not going to get into sort of the rhetorical strategies because this is a critical thinking series. Um, so I went through and I looked at uh, many of the, the top 100 speeches. And I, you know, I spent maybe, in all honesty, I spent maybe about 40 minutes. I didn't spend a whole bunch of time. But I spent about 40 minutes, maybe five or so minutes for each of the speeches. Some of the speeches I've never heard of. Some of them I'd heard of but never read. Some of them that you know, some of them that just basically blew me out the water, and this was it. A lot of the speeches were really good. A lot of the MLK speeches that I saw, really, really good speeches. I saw a lot of good. I saw a lot of good speeches from you know a lot of sort of the best spe public speakers in history. And the speeches were good, but from a conceptual standpoint, it wouldn't make for good pedagogical sort of instruction because um, the speech wasn't as visually complex as this speech. This speech is about the most visually, you'll see in a second, complex speeches that I've come across in my lifetime. The JFK civil rights speech. Absolutely unbelievable. And I'd never, I hate to admit this, <laughs> I really shouldn't be admitting this publicly, I'd never heard or read or heard of the JFK civil rights speech. I. I know that's bad, right? I know that's bad. I'm supposed to know about all that stuff, but I don't. And I didn't. But now I get what everybody got then. Oh my god. I mean, I don't know if he wrote it or who wrote it. It's a it's a sick speech. The speech is a good speech just in the fact that you know, he's talking about civil rights and all that. That's all well and good. Um that's not what attracted me to the speech. I was just clicking through speeches of all types. Uh, and then I read the speech and I was like, the structure of this speech is absolutely genius. At least the way I see the structure. You might perceive the structure differently. So what I'm saying again, this is not the end all be all. What I'm about to put on the board isn't the facts of the matter as such. It's Dr. Campbell's interpretation of the JFK speech, Dr. Campbell's map of the JF JFK speech. You might agree with segments of my map. You might not necessarily disagree with some segments of my map, but you might think that other passages hold greater or lesser interpretation than I might have emphasized, right? So we're going to have different, we're going to have different maps by definition, right? There is no run, there is no right way to do this. What you'll know is, what you'll note is, this is sort of a precursor to something which is more rigorous and actually does have right answers, which will become sort of um, mapping or identifying um, the logical structure of paragraphs and arguments using predicate logic. And once we get to predicate logic, there are very specific rules on how that should be done. And on my YouTube channel, I mean, I have, I don't know, you know, five hours, maybe five hours devoted to predicate logic. There's a lot that I've already done on that. So this is not that. This is totally separate from that. This is sort of what you might do 
as, um, and I, I wouldn't even just say as a young person. I, like, this, mapping out the JFK, when I found the speech last night, I was like, this is a freaking gold mine. What an amazing, what an amazing rhetorical genius. Um, assuming that he wrote it. I don't know that he wrote it, his speech writer. I know it's his speech. It's credited to him. So it's a, it's an amazing speech. It's a tragedy that it took me this many years, um, 35, <laughs> right? It's a tragedy it took this long for me to, to identify um, the speech. But So let me just read it first. Let me just read it, and then I'm going to map it. Okay, so top of page 10, I'm just going to read it. It's an absolutely beautiful speech, right? And this is just a segment of it. And I think I jump. I jump around in the speech because I certain elements that I want. This nation was founded by men of many nations and backgrounds. Sets the tone. It was founded on the principle that all men are created equal and that the rights of every man are diminished when the rights of one man are threatened. And when Americans are sent to Vietnam or West Berlin, we don't ask for whites only. It ought to be possible, therefore, for American students of any color to attend any public institution they select without having to be backed up by troops. It ought to be possible for American consumers of any color to receive equal service in places of public accommodation. And it ought to be possible for, I love that, you know, there's rhetorical strategies here. It ought to be that rhetorical strategies, that constant rhetorical, the cadence also is amazing, right? And it ought to be possible for American citizens of any color to register to, to vote in a free election without interference or fear of reprisal. It ought to be possible, in short, for every American to enjoy the privileges of being American without regard to his race or his color. But this is not the case. Ooh, I got goosebumps. This is it's such a good speech, right? The Negro baby born in America today, just good alliteration, right? The Negro baby born in America today, regardless of the section of the state in which he is born, has about one half as much chance of completing a high school of completing high school as a, it's probably not a, a high school as a white baby born in the same place on the same day. One third as much a chance of completing college. One third as much a chance of becoming a professional man. Twice as much a chance of becoming unemployed. About one seventh as much a chance of earning $10,000 a year. A life expectancy which is seven years shorter and the prospect of earning half, only half as much. This is not a sectional if, uh, issue. Difficulties over segregation and discrimination exist in every city, in every state of the union, um, producing in many cities a rising tide of discontent that threatens the public safety. Nor is, it, nor is this a partisan issue. In a time of domestic crisis, men of goodwill and generosity should be able to unite regardless of party or politics. This is not even a legal or legislative issue alone. It is better to settle these matters in the courts than on the streets. I love that line, right? <laughs> I love that line. It is better to settle these matters in the courts than on the streets, because you know what's going to happen if it gets to the streets, right? And new laws are, this is such a good speech. <laughs> and new laws are needed at every level. But law alone cannot make men see right. Another profound line. This is just, it's like, and this is just a segment of the speech. It's like, it's ridiculous. Uh, and, uh, but law alone cannot, men, uh, cannot make men see right. I love that. We are confronted primarily with a moral issue. It is as old as the scriptures and is as clear as American Constitution. The heart of the question is whether all Americans are to be afforded equal rights and equal opportunities, whether we are going to treat our fellow Americans as we want to be treated. I mean, come on. That's like, I hope I can write that well <laughs> when I grow up. I wish I could write that. I mean, I can write well, but that is, I mean, it's just the cadence, the alliteration. I forget, my, my wife would know, anaphora and anasma or something, blah, blah, blah. I don't know that part. But there's like rhetorical devices for repeating you know, clauses at the end, at the middle, in the beginning. Now, it's got so much rhetorical finesse about it. It's so suave. It's so smooth. It's so easy to understand. It's poetic. But also, it's logically out of control. 